In this video, I will be making sodium metal with sodium hydroxide. Right now, I don't have too much use for sodium metal, but it's just a very fun element. So to start off, I set up a flask and I add 14 grams of magnesium turnings. Then I add 20 grams of sodium hydroxide on top. As the catalyst for this reaction, I add in 3 grams of menthol crystals and 150 ml of paraffin oil. Then I have some small bits of old sodium that I add in. This will help speed up the reaction, but it is not mandatory. I don't know exactly how much it is, but I'm gonna assume it's 2-3 to three grams. I then add a gas adapter on top and attach a hose that leads into a bubble trap. This bubble trap is simply a graduating cylinder filled with some paraffin oil. To start the reaction, I heat the mixture to 200 C and start stirring. Unfortunately, the weight of the magnesium and sodium hydroxide is blocking the stir bar from moving, so I try to help it a little. After a while, it seems to be able to hold up the stirring and we are producing some bubbles, which is the hydrogen gas escaping from the mixture. But after a while, the stirring is again blocked by the weight, so I got tired of it and I just poured everything into an Erlenmeyer flask which works a lot better. We can see in the trap that the hydrogen production is going nicely. What is happening in this reaction are several steps. At first, the hydrogen gas will mostly be from the sodium and menthol working together to remove water from the mixture. This will take a while since water that is present in the sodium hydroxide has to diffuse out first. The way it works is that the sodium metal reacts with the menthol to form a sodium alkoxide and hydrogen gas. This sodium alkoxide can then react with water and form sodium hydroxide and menthol. Also, some of the sodium metal will directly react with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, but this is pretty minor. When all the water is removed from the reaction mixture, we start producing the sodium. The sodium alkoxide of the menthol can react with magnesium metal to form sodium metal and a magnesium complex of two menthols. And then as the final step, the magnesium complex can react with the sodium hydroxide to form magnesium oxide and reforming the catalyst, of which half is menthol and half is the sodium alkoxide of menthol, which can then continue again in the cycle to make more sodium. To get the flask to 200C, I need to insulate it well since the contact surface is relatively small. So I put up multiple layers of aluminum foil to trap the heat and then I leave it to react overnight. So I come back the next day and it's less than 15 hours later and it looks like the oil in the trap has backflowed, which indicates that the reaction is done. So I take it apart and let the flask cool to room temperature. I then pour all the contents together through a kitchen sieve to catch the majority of the sodium. Afterward, I just mushed all the pieces together because all the beads are annoying to deal with and I put it into a new Erlenmeyer flask. This sodium is still very contaminated with bits of magnesium and I want to separate them. So I add in all of the 1,4 dioxane that I produced in my last video, which was only 70 milliliters. Since I work with a limited amount of dioxane, I tried to get rid of most of the paraffin oil beforehand, but there was still some in there. After I poured it all in, I added a stir bar and a condenser, and then I set it up for a reflux for one hour. Because the boiling point of dioxane is 101C, it will melt the sodium, but the sodium is less dense than the dioxane, and magnesium is denser, which will cause the sodium and magnesium to separate. So the sodium should float on top of the dioxane, while the magnesium sinks to the bottom. After it is done, I take away the heating plate and allow it to cool back to room temperature. Unfortunately, the sodium didn't float on top of the dioxane. Since it didn't use that much dioxane and there was some paraffin oil still present in the flask, it could be that this mixture has a slightly lower density, on which sodium cannot float. But still, I noticed that the sodium was separated from the magnesium. So to catch all the pieces and recycle the dioxane, I poured it through a paper filter, while leaving behind the denser magnesium in the flask. So here are all the bits of sodium that I got, but unfortunately it has a lot of little beads, and I want one big piece. So to join them all together, I put the filter in a bunch of toluene and got off all the sodium beads. I put it in a stir bar and bring the toluene to a boil. Then I occasionally squirt in some isopropyl alcohol, which will remove the oxidation from the sodium and allow them to coalesce into one big bead. When I see that all the bits of sodium are joining together, 
I stop adding the isopropyl alcohol and reduce the temperature so that the toluene stops boiling. So I just take it off the plate and we can see one big blob of shiny liquid sodium in the beaker. I then remove the stir bar and add the last bit of isopropyl alcohol to the toluene. So to quickly solidify the sodium, I simply pour out most of the hot toluene and then I add in some fresh toluene. And now I have one big piece of solid sodium. So for storage, I take a bottle and fill it with some toluene and simply scoop the sodium bead into the new bottle. We can see it instantly starting to tarnish in the air. I weighed the bead and it turned out to be 8.6 grams. Assuming that I started with 2 to 3 grams of sodium, it means that my yield is 49 to 57 percent, which is lower than the original protocol. But I lost a lot of sodium that went through the sieve. Many minuscule beads of sodium were produced that I couldn't properly get out. So that is likely the reason why the yield is lower. Though my reaction did complete in under 15 hours, which is a lot faster than the original protocol, which is likely because my magnesium was a lot finer. I don't know yet what I will use this sodium for, but I might use it for drying solvents.